I've been learning about money for more than 10 years. In this time, I've made countless mistakes about money and some were extremely silly, but some others were not. These mistakes left me with some of the most valuable lessons. Lessons that changed my life and the way I think, the way I go about money. So today, I'll be sharing with you 10 of these personal finance lessons. Income isn't everything. When I was a kid, I thought that money was everything. I thought that in order to be successful, I needed to own the most expensive car, live in the biggest house, have the newest phone. This is maybe due to the environment and country in which I was raised. As I grew older, I slowly realized that this could not be further from the truth. I realized that while money solves many problems, it cannot buy happiness, health, or meaningful relationships. There was a time I solely focused on maximizing my income, often at the expense of my well-being and some friendships. And while I may have advanced in my career and made some good money, I felt empty and disconnected from what truly mattered. Money is actually a tool. It's not an end in itself. It provides comfort, security, and opportunities, but it should not be the only focus. There is no amount of money that can replace the joy of spending time with loved ones, of pursuing a passion, or the feeling of being healthy. Financial success without personal fulfillment leads to an empty life. Real millionaires are frugal. This statement may seem counterintuitive when all we see online is extravagant lifestyles, people showing off. However, if we take a closer look at the habits of many self-made millionaires like Warren Buffett, for example, it shows a different story. I mean, it shows that frugality is a key component in their financial success. This doesn't mean that they live a life of depriving themselves. It involves making intentional decisions about their money. Real millionaires understand the value of money and they are mindful on how they use it. They prioritize their need over the wants, they avoid unnecessary expenses and they focus on long-term financial goals. One of the most surprising lessons that I learned is that many millionaires live in modest homes, they drive average cars and they don't buy luxury items that actually provide no real value. They know that keeping up appearances leads nowhere. Instead, they invest in appreciating assets such as stocks or real estate or other businesses even. Real millionaires are frugal because they understand that true wealth is not about flashy cars or expensive watches, but more about financial security and most important, about freedom. By making smart choices, avoiding debt and investing wisely, they create and sustain their wealth over long periods of times. Invest in yourself. Education is a crucial component of self-investment. Whether through online courses or self-learning or getting new skills and knowledge which may improve your job and your value, it can actually open opportunities, a lot of them. For instance, learning a new language, a coding new language or even earning a certification can improve your salary and your career prospects. Personal development is equally important. You should invest time in activities that improve your mental and emotional well-being, such as reading or meditation or even going to the gym. Health is another vital area of self-investment. Regular exercise, balanced diet, and even getting going to the doctor once a year, just to prevent possible health issues. Because down the line, a healthy lifestyle not only reduces medical expenses, but it also increases your quality of life, which can actually help you long term. Track the important stuff. Okay, what I mean by this is that sometimes we may feel overwhelmed by having to track every single expense that we have, where our money is going or where our money is coming from. So just keep it to the important stuff. By keeping a close eye on key aspects of your financial life, you gain control, clarity and confidence, making it easier for you to achieve your goals. You should track your income and expenses, but just know exactly how much money is coming in and how much is going out. This can actually help you to create and to stick to a budget, which prevents overspending and it also highlights opportunities where you can actually save more money and where you can actually invest. Further, you should monitor your savings and your investments and set clear goals. Do you want to build an emergency fund? Do you want to save for a down payment on a house? Do you want to invest for retirement or do you actually want to retire early? Just review regularly your progress and adjust and change your strategy if you have to. Also track your milestones and achievements. Celebrate really small victories. Celebrate the first $1,000. Celebrate the first $10,000. Celebrate the first $50,000. Because celebrating small victories can actually help you 
to reach your goals. It can motivate you to stay on track and to continue making good financial decisions. Okay, this may sound counterintuitive, but here it goes. Investing should be boring. Some of the most successful investors understand that a boring but carefully thought investing approach is often the key to making money. What I mean by this is that boring investing typically involves a consistent strategy rather than chasing the latest trends or trying to time the market. This means focusing on a diversified portfolio of stocks, bonds and any other sort of assets that just match your risk tolerance and your long-term goals. Just look at Warren Buffett, he invested in a boring way for long term and look where he is now. Instead of seeking quick wins, boring investment prioritizes is steady and incremental gains over a long period of time, which makes it less stressful and more likely to earn positive results as it takes advantage of compound interest and the overall upward trend of the market. On the hand side, investing should be simple. Simplifying investing means that you stick to an easy strategy that is easy to understand and easy to implement. One of the simplest and most effective approaches is to invest in low-cost index funds or ETFs. These funds track the performance of a market index such as the S&P 500 or the Nasdaq, providing broad market exposure with minimal efforts and lower fees compared to actively managed funds. Keeping your investment simply reduces the chances of making expensive mistakes, especially if you don't know much about it. Complex investment strategies often require frequent adjustments on market knowledge and increasing the risk of peer decisions. A simple buy and hold strategy, on the other hand, allows you to focus on your long-term goal without being screwed up by the temporary market. Another aspect of simple investment is diversification. By spreading your investments across various assets and sectors, you actually reduce risk and increase the potential for stable returns. This can actually be achieved through a mix of index funds or ETFs that just cover different markets or industries, including domestic and international. Now this leads investing should be long. Take a look at the long-term perspective in your building wealth rather than in the short-term perspective. Because while short-term market movements can be unpredictable and stressful, long-term approaches of investment provide stability and reduce risk and they actually maximize growth. Long-term investment leverages the power of compounding. Because when you invest over an extended period of time, the return of your investments begin to generate their own returns. And this accelerates the amount of money that you get and it keeps, keeps on going and keeps on going, making your money actually work harder for you. Financial markets naturally experience ups and downs, but historically, they tend to rise over the long run. By staying invested through market cycles, you actually avoid trying to time the market, which can lead to costly mistakes and missed opportunities and you losing money. A long strategy also allows you to focus on your long-term goal. Buy expensive stuff. Okay, while this may sound counterintuitive, you should always strive to buy expensive stuff opposed to buying cheap stuff. Buying expensive stuff can actually make sense when you approach it with intention actually. It's not about spending a lot. It's about investing and buying on the necessary stuff, on finding the balance between quality and value. When you buy expensive, high quality items, you often buy fewer replacements, whether it's clothes, electronics, furniture, or just higher priced stuff. It actually tends up to be better quality and more durable. For example, a well-made pair of shoes. They might actually cost more, but it may actually avoid that you end up buying one pair each year which in the end end up being more expensive. High quality products often provide superior performance, comfort and aesthetic. So consider a high-end mattress, for example. At the beginning, that might be expensive, but the benefits are better sleep and improved health and just improves the quality of life. For example, also kitchen tools, appliances, they can last longer and they make you more productive and they actually make your experience of cooking more fun. Also, expensive stuff often tend to keep their value. This is particularly true for things like real estate or luxury watches or even some quality furniture and art. Because these items can sometimes appreciate over time instead of maintaining the value, which offer a higher potential resale value overall. 
read at least one personal finance book a year. All right, so personal finance books offer valuable insights and practical advice from experts who have spent years studying and learning about financial systems and the market. And here's why it's important to just read one a year, at least, continuous learning. This keeps you informed about the market, about the changes, because the finance world is extremely dynamic and there are new strategies, new tools, new regulation. Everything changes from year to year. And by reading a new book on finance each year, you stay updated on the latest trends and perhaps even the best practices. Also, personal finance books provide different strategies and perspectives because every author has a unique experience and insight. So each book is actually unique and they offer a different angle for you to learn more about money management. For example, one book might focus on budgeting and saving, while another one might go a little bit deeper into investment or debt reduction. Just get yourself exposed to different approaches, which will help you to develop a well-rounded understanding on personal finance. And this will allow you to tailor strategies that best fit your circumstances and goals. Reading books can also inspire and motivate you because the story of the authors and what they share on their own journeys, including successes and failures, can be incredibly motivating for yourself. For example, for me, it was with The Pathless Path. Learning about other experiences and the strategies they use to overcome challenges can encourage you to take charge of your own situation and to make positive changes. Money buys freedom. While the saying says money can't buy happiness, and I do tend to agree with it, partially, money does buy freedom. Financial freedom means having the ability to make choices that are not only dictated by money. This could actually be as simple as choosing a career that you love rather than one that pays more, or as significant as retiring early to spend more time with your family and pursue your passion. Money actually provides the security to make these choices without the stress of not being able to afford something. Money can also buy time. One of the most valuable aspects of financial freedom is the ability to reclaim your time. With sufficient money on savings and investments, you can reduce the number of hours that you need to work, potentially going part-time, for example, or even retiring early. It also allows you to outsource services like cleaning or cooking and will allow you to spend more time on activities that you bring you joy and fulfillment, such as your hobbies, traveling or spending time with your family. Financial freedom also offers peace. Having an emergency fund and well-planned financial cushion means that you are prepared for unexpected events like medical emergencies or a job loss or major repairs like if your car breaks down, which happened to me like one month ago. This security reduces your anxiety and stress and will allow you to live a life more fully present in, in the moment. Also, money can facilitate personal growth and opportunities, which allow you to invest in yourself through education or personal development courses or even starting your own business, which can actually lead to a great career satisfaction and personal fulfillment overall. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and you might enjoy watching this video on how to create your own budget and how to stick with it.